Hello, everyone. Welcome to the another installment of uh, the fans of the PMS PSP Gym Talk. Uh, I'm Dan Rivera. We have our admin, Mark Avila, uh, with us, and we have a guest here, um, Mr. Michael Bielis. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Uh, this episode is going to be about uh, Mr. Chuck Yeager, one of the aviation pioneer, pioneers that we've had in, uh, um, in history. So uh, we're going to discuss... Uh, uh, what, what his accomplishments were, what we were, he's famous for, it, and things like that. We're going to try to educate some people out there and see what, what uh, where this leads us. So uh, I want to welcome everybody to the, to the actual meeting or the discussion. Um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at what things, and then we'll discuss it. So um, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, we all know that Chuck Yeager was the first person to... Uh, Break the sound barrier. That uh, break the sound barrier. He uh, he did a lot of um, a lot of things here. Where um, for aviation, he was part. Of, of course, he shot down a. Uh, um, he was one of the first to shoot down an ME two sixty two fighter jet with a P. I believe it was a P fifty one. So basically, we. Uh, We'll get started here. Now, he had a long distinguished career um, in the military. He uh, He's won a lot of medals uh, from what uh, Wikipedia says and things like that. So um, he was part of the flight test school. He just recently passed away not too, a couple of years ago. So uh, his his wife, or not his wife, his kids are keeping the his Facebook page alive. Uh, his wife, uh, Glennis, I think is, is dead at this point. I'm not sure if she's still alive, but I believe that uh, the family is keeping the, his memory alive by, uh, by going on his Facebook page. But his Facebook page is cool. You guys should check it out. Um, uh, basically, um, Chuck's uh, career began, of course, as we know, in World War II as, as a private in the United States Army Air Forces. It's funny. He started as a lowly old private. And that basically he served as a, an aircraft mechanic uh, in 1942. Uh, I'm, I'm actually looking at an app, guys. I'm sorry. So bear with me. Um, basically he entered as an enlisted pilot training. Uh, and upon graduation, he was promoted to the rank of flight officer uh, flying a P-51, no doubt. We've got a P-51 over there at the, at the Air Museum. It's, it's uh, called Mad Angel. And uh, we've got several photographs of it. It's pretty cool. Um, basically, uh, after the war, he became a test pilot of some sort. And um, basically, including experimental rocket planes, the jets, things like that. Um, of course, that's what's led up to him flying the X-1, the X-1 um, plane. So the Bell X-1 was trying they had a lot of problems with the, the aircraft before and a lot of guys were getting killed. And Chuck uh, was one of the ones that actually suggested the uh, change of design of the X-1, uh, Bell X-1, which led up to the, uh, the breaking of the sound barrier, which is kind of interesting. Uh, he basically went on as a, as a test pilot to uh, break a lot of records, things like that. Um, he was instrumental. There's a in the right stuff, the movie The Right Stuff. There is a scene where he took an, an, an F 104 almost 110,000 feet, and unfortunately got really instability, instable, unstable, excuse me, and it went out of control and he bailed out. That crash site is still there to this day over at Edwards Air Force Base, it's a historical monument. So I'm going to open up the floor to everybody right now. And we're going to talk about Chuck and his accomplishments and things like that. So um, what, what do you guys, what have you guys seen in your lifetime? Uh, Michael, you, since you're, you've come into the, uh, I'm going to start with you. What have you seen in your lifetime? What about this? 
Uh, going with Chuck Yeager. Um, one of the things that, you know, I teach online. Uh, I was in the Air Force for 20 years as a weather guy, not a pilot myself. So I had a bunch of pilots or bosses. Um, learned a lot from them over the years, of course. But for Chuck Yeager, you know, teaching online, and I love, you know, the Pima Air and Space Museum because there's a lot of stuff. And one of the things that you guys also have is a MiG-15. And I don't know if you guys know this, he actually, when the one that we got from, uh, that was a defector during Korea, uh, the MiG-15, he flew it at, it goes up about 50,000 feet. He dove it down and in the dive, you know, it's very unstable. He almost crashed it at 3,000 feet off the deck. He didn't bail and he did. And when he told the Russians, hey, I did this, they're like, no, you didn't. He's like, yeah, I did. So I thought that was pretty uh, cool of something that Chuck Yeager did. Test things to limit and keep pushing it and just see where it goes. Yeah, he uh, he also what he did is he went ahead and um, <clears throat> he flew it to the um, to the to what that was now known as Area 51. I don't know if uh, we uh, we uh, we know that base very well and it's a non-existent base and so on and so forth. So it is now. When I was in, uh, sorry to cut you off, but in 2011 when I got out, it still had a big black box on Google Earth over it or um, uh, Google Maps. Today mm -hmm. you can go and and look at it and it's open. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Creech. So yep. even though they don't talk a whole lot about it, it's more open source than what it was back even maybe 10 or 15 years ago. No, there's a there's a website out there that actually watches the base. I'm pretty sure we all know what it is. Uh, Mark Anthony, I was trying to, to let you know about this website. It's it's an interesting site. Uh, it's called DreamlandResort.com, and it was put out by a German gentleman that actually lives up in Rachel, Nevada. And uh, he was telling a lot of folks, because Peter Merlin is probably, I'm pretty sure, we, um, Michael, you know who Peter Mer Merlin is. Peter Merlin is... He's an expert in aviation. Uh, I've talked to Peter Merlin a lot. Um, I asked him about a week ago because I was preparing for this and I emailed him. He said that uh, Chuck actually worked with Tony Levere and with um, um, Ben Rich and all those guys over to Skunk Works and things like that. And he basically said to me with two email that they were all pioneers. Because Chuck actually flew over the over the base before it was a base, and <laughs> believe it or not, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So, generally, Chuck has been has had his fingers in, in aviation for God knows how long. Um, those of you that are really interested in Chuck Yeager's history and legacy, just go to like. There's a lot of he's got a website of his own. Um, he also has stuff on Wikipedia, things like that. You can read uh, the education of how he became an aviation pioneer was sort of instrumental in, in, in testing a lot of these new airplanes. Um, the NFX2, uh, the X2, X1A. Um, of course, we know his flights in the F-15 Eagle, Glamorous Glennis. Um, the, for Sun and Fun, he did. I was reading up on it, and um, he did a flight, a backseat flight in, in an F-16, and I didn't know that myself until I, I read it. I'm like, wow, moving away. So, you know, he's been, he's had aviation in his blood for a long time, okay? And the only reason why he did not go into the astronaut corps is because he didn't have a degree. He didn't have a, a bachelor's degree. He was, he was just a Run of the mill person like anybody off the street learning new things. That's it. You know, so. All right. Next person I want to call on is Mark Anthony Avila, one of our admins. Mark, what do you what do you think about all this? Uh, what have you from what you've been in your life? What have you experienced on it? As far as Chuck Yeager? Yes. Yep. I'm. I'm a noob. <laughs> well, I'm a noob, but I also would like to say that uh, I'm, I'm, I don't want to stay a noob because I don't know if you can actually see, but hold it, hold it in front of you. I, uh, there you go. Put this offline. Shortly after he passed away, and I thought it was a super idea to start getting, uh, it was time to actually start. Uh, reading about him and getting to know about Chuck Yeager because I grew up uh, 
worked an aviation freak ever since I could I think well five years old is when I became because uh, my dad was actually uh, into aviation and he had a lot of uh, scale models and stuff laying around the house and I just you know started getting into the uh, from that and that's how it, it sparked in my life as far as aviation and then but one of the first important people in aviation I remember was Chuck Yeager being the first one uh, that I remember uh, the known aviation part of history and I know he has like well he probably has over two books I think since he that he wrote in his life and I never got a hold of that first one I forget the name of it but maybe you can enlighten me Dan or Michael on his first book that Chuck oh, Yeager had, yeah the, the the Chuck Yeager I think is just the name of the book but it has he's uh next to an F-20 tiger shark <laughs> yeah that's an old book but that's a goodie and I wasn't able to get, get a hold of that book. So I got his second book. I think this is his second book. And uh, it just came in the mail not too long ago. And I, I want to actually start reading about uh, stuff like that. Um, I remember a scene, uh, I think it was on video on YouTube about him getting in the back seat of, uh, was it an F-15? I think was back over. It was the F-16, actually. That's what F-16? It was. I thought it was an F-15. No, no, um, he, he actually flew the F-15. Um, and I think they, so. they, as a matter of fact, they had, they did uh, name that plane uh, Glamorous Glass. Every plane Chuck Yeager's been in, um, he has been, uh, named it after his wife. Mm -hmm. The F-86, he, he flew in, in Korea. Uh, the P-51 Glamorous Glass, we all know about that one. Uh, he flew the F-15 had glamorous glenis on it. The F-16 he even flew in was painted um, glamorous glenis. There's photographs out there about it uh, with it. So basically, what I have, um, a lot of us have seen the movie The Right Stuff, okay. And I, when I first saw the movie, I didn't think about it until I read about it. Uh, he actually did a cameo of uh, as Fred the bartender. And uh, yeah, Sam Shepard, yeah, cool. Sam Shepard actually played him, you know, in real life. And Sam Shepard and Chuck Yeager, believe it or not, became really close friends after that movie. And every flight that he's done, Sam Shepard was invited out to do to actually watch this. There's some that he couldn't go to, but uh, Sam Shepard was there. So and that's another interesting fact I, I was reading about. Yeah, I've read the book Great Stuff years ago. I haven't seen the movie. I should probably go uh, find that and check that it's, out. It's That'd cool. Be neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the um, the things that, that that I read about how he, you know, I can't really condense everything into, into one thing, but the Happy Bottom Writing Club that they were out at Muroc and Edwards Air Force Base, they're actually rebuilding it as we speak and it's called poncho's happy R bottom writing club mm. and, it, and it's not going to be actually on the base but it's going to be on the side of the road between barstow and um what is it um barstow and uh mojave so basically it'll probably be outside the gate is what they're talking about because they're taking the old stuff from poncho's because all this stuff is there when poncho's was burned it burnt down I mean, that was true in the movie. When Poncho's burned down, they, 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 that's the that's actually true, a true story. Because it was like a little, she turned uh, Poncho Barn, she actually turned her ranch home or ranch into a, like a watering hole for, for the guys out at Muroc but, or, and Edwards, you know. It was interesting. She herself was a, was a heroine of aviation as well. Yep. It's interesting to, to, know, to know that. So he. Uh, it's funny how you say uh, water yeah. hole. <laughs> water, water hole, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Also, I didn't know that. That, that he, like you said, he did. He uh, 
he was the first one to shoot down a ME. ME 262, yep. One of, mm. one of the first ones, yeah. He saw, he says, what the hell was that? Because I read the book. I read mm. uh, the first one, and he goes, what the hell was that? <clears throat> I said, that doesn't look like a prop plane. <laughs> so it's like, Another another interesting fact about Chuck that I that I read about was that he started uh, he's one of the proponents of the Civil Air Patrol. He was the what? Say again. One of the first people to be the commandant of the of the Civil Air Patrol. Oh really? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't know that. It's just, uh, it says it says here. The, the, I'm, I'm quoting this this app by the way. Mm -hmm. The Civil Air Patrol and the Volunteer Auxiliary of the United States Air Force awards the Chuck Charles E. Yeager award to its senior members as part of its aerospace education program. Uh, the General Chuck Yeager Cadet Squadron, associ uh, associated with the Florida Wing, Civil Air Patrol are based in Brandon, Florida, and also named in his honor. Uh, he original originally um, originally helped start that. That's why it's named after him, uh, that squadron and that wow. award. Yeah. He's done a lot. I mean, he's done a lot. You remember Jack Ridley, right? And Bob Hoover, you, Mark, you know who Bob Hoover is. And Michael, you know who Bob Hoover is. And for those that don't know who Bob Hoover was, Bob Hoover was the most famous air show pilot you can, you can imagine. He was sponsored by Rockwell International. He had the, his strike. Bob Hoover was one of the three people that helped Chuck Yeager. They flew the bomber that, that dropped him, the B-29. Bob Hoover was the co-pilot, and Jack Reilly was the pilot. And they swapped uh, uh, roles when they, when they were doing test flights like that. It's pretty mm. cool. It's pretty interesting. Bob Hoover, can you imagine Bob Hoover being instrumental in, in aviation? Imagine that. We only know him as, uh, as an air show pilot, just like Art Scholl. Wasn't Our he show. an astronaut also? No. No, oh, he wasn't. Who, who was the other guy that was? Who was the That's other very guy? important aviation, too. He's like Bob, Bob Hoover level. He's like way up there, too. Oh, uh, I don't remember, actually, quite honestly. He's on the top of my head. Uh, we're we're yeah. just talking about that uh, a while back then. Hmm. I don't know. I don't remember. Happy was, Boynton. We we're talking no. about his book, remember? That was Bob Hoover. Bob Hoover and the other is another guy. You just don't remember. I don't remember. No, my memory is yeah, me just, either. yeah. My memory is so, so yeah. flabby right now. Hey, we're getting old. That's what it is. Jeez. <laughs> well, my, my memory's never been good. I only remember, remember things when I want to. Michael, do you live in Tucson? Uh, I live out in Benson. Oh, really? Okay, good. We got three Arizonans here. Nice. Mm -hmm. And um, did a lot of trips to Benson, huh, Dan? Oh, oh at, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, railroad. Driving for Halcon. <laughs> railroad, yep. Yeah. We we drew for the railroad. Um, it yeah, was we fun. did. It was fun going over there. Getting back to this, uh, you know, um, my understanding is that the Chuck, the the, the F-15 Chuck Yeager, flew in is out out at, at, at Amark. It's a it's one of them camouflage painted F-15s, right? Like the, the uh, yeah. presser. Yeah. Yeah, his grass for F-15s, and he was. It, it was originally. It was originally gray, <clears throat> but then they painted it to to uh, for D-Day. Mm, yeah. The D-Day color, D-Day colors, yep. So you know, like I said, you know, he's been he's been uh, he's got so many medals, man. He's got the oh distinguished service medal. He's got Legion of Merit. Oh my God, he's got Purple Hearts up the Ying Yang. He's got the Presidential Medal, Medal of Freedom. Um, man, I tell you, this guy's got, if only you could see how many medals this man has, I'll, I'll show you. He could, he could, he could pass your, 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 your bedroom wall with, with all his medals. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. And, you know, it's, it's quite the, um, the, the California, the California Science Museum. Okay. I found out that S20, that the picture I took. Is his actual F F twenty Tiger Shark? Where was this? At, where was this at again? Then uh, the California Science Center. Remember oh where, yeah, you were remember, there. Remember they where had, I got? Yep, they had I got the that. F twenty there, right? Yeah, it's hanging up. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yep. right. it's hanging up, and it's uh, there's a I think I forgot what else is there. 
Lucky more, you to go there. Lucky I was more fo- I was more focused on um, on the space shuttle because the space shuttle was in the hangar, and I'm like, where is it? Where is it? Where's the space shuttle? It's an endeavor. But I don't know if this is proper, Dan. But if you could just state a little bit of uh, our experiences working at uh, Hawkon and and how we had to drive, but at the same time we would take advantage of uh, uh, visiting well, different museums wherever, depending on the on the business trip we took. Um, the previous job, I won't mention names because we don't want to mention their, their name on, on, on camera. So our previous job, we had to deal with the railroad. We used to drive for the railroad and it would take us out on different um, aspects of the country, uh, California, Oregon, Washington State, um, Idaho. I'd go to New Mexico. Um, our former uh, curator James Stem is now at a museum that I've actually visited uh, up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He, he's at this nuclear science museum now. And I, like I said, I wanted to give him a set up, but I, he never uh, got back to me on it. They have an actual exib- exhibit of Chuck Yeager over there because he actually helped to fly one of the B-29s that kind of monitored the, the nuclear blast. And I didn't know that either. And it doesn't even mention it here. I'm like, mm. wow, that's kind of interesting. That's where he, he's got all kinds of history. Yeah, I think uh, I was doing another class and I don't remember all the specifics. I believe it was the F-86 Sabre. And in that, I believe it was the, it was flying a Canadian one and it was a female in the front seat. And I guess it was a trainer or a two seater and he was in the back seat. And so he was also, she was one that the first female to fly or break the speed of sound um, with him along for the ride as well. Right. Mm. Exactly. He was the one that sort of, see, I think he would also, I'm not too sure about this, but I, I might, I'm just going to check the facts on this, but it heard something that he actually helped train the Canadian air force on uh, on tactics and stuff like that. So, of course, there was many video games and computer games um, that, that were named after him that are very old that I can't play anymore on my computer. I wish I could, but, um, you know, like uh, Chuck Yeager's uh, Advanced Tactical Fighter or something like that, and oh, my gosh. That was hit actually under his name? Yeah, he actually uh, had, he did the voiceovers for, for, wow. for a lot of the, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, go look it up. Go look it up online later. Well, it comes to my memory some of these games, but I didn't know that they Yep. They were uh, under him. See, the year I was born, um, Chuck was actually inducted into the National Aviation Hall of Fame over at um, in Washington, D.C. It's kind of interesting. Congress awarded him the Silver Medical Medal equivalent to a non-combat Medal of Honor. Hmm. For contributing immeasurably to aeros- the aerospace science by risking his life piloting the X-1 research plane faster than the speed of sound on the, October 14th, 1947. Gerald Ford is one that gave it to him. It's kind of mm. interesting. A, he's got all kinds of awards. This man's, I swear, when he walks, he twirls over. <laughs> so... Mm. But I mean, there's a lot of other pioneers out there that have done a lot, like the Wright brothers, things like that, and uh, some of these companies that are out there, like Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mooney, Mr. Cessna, uh, Mr. Boeing. Look at what's what's going on now. They've got all kinds of powerhouses as far as uh, uh, aviation manufacturers out there, and um, they start in a garage. Boeing started in a garage, believe it or not. They were doing, mm. they were doing, uh, they were building under, I think under license, the Wright Flyers and stuff like that or whatever. And then they moved up to designing their own planes. And then, <laughs> it's funny, then they started designing these big flying boats and the clippers and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So, but um, Chuck's been, Chuck Yeager's been, uh, um, I met Bob Hoover once, Okay. And Chuck Yeager was at that air, same air show, but I didn't get to shake uh, Chuck Yeager's hand because he had to go fly his P-51. He's flying his P-51 at the time. And that was upstate New York. That's the one where, that's the one, uh, 
mirror show where I told you I saw the Blue Angel crashes. Uh, they, they slice each other. That's where uh, Ms. Commander Gerson died. Mm. Mike, you, Michael, you were going to say something? I was just, yeah, I didn't realize that they had a uh, crash at that air show. That's pretty mm -hmm. intense. Yep. Because I posted something on the uh, He Man and uh, an article about that, about the um, Arizona aviation days that we had uh, back in November, the air show. And uh, I posted a video of Mike Gerson's crash. Um, the other guy got out, but he didn't get out. He actually, the, the wing actually took out his cockpit and basically mm -hmm. killed him instantaneously. So, you know, and um, his wife was are talking, talking about, about the. Are you talking about the uh, the pilot with the, the flu, the, the, the wing and the yellow? Or which one are you talking about? Niagara Falls. <clears throat> They were having an air show at the Niagara Falls uh, um, Airport. That's not the flying wing plane, is it? No, 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 no. That's Jack oh. Northam. Oh, okay. No, that's not. That's uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I just don't remember his name. Steve Hinton, I think it was. That died. But, well, anyway. What was he flying? What was he flying? He was what flying. Kind of plane? Uh, who? Mike Gershon? The, yeah, the one you were just talking about right now. The, the, one, one, that... the, the, one, the one in your background, dude. Niagara Falls, you said, or whatever. Yeah, it was an A4 Skyhawk. Is, is oh, what the, okay. He's Ooh. flying with the Blue Angels. And, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, the wing hit the... Uh, the wing of the other aircraft hit his cockpit, disintegrated his cockpit, and he was, he was gone instantly. I mean, but... In any he case, was a uh, Blue Angel pilot? Yeah. They were too slow. And there information, and he crashed? No, they were doing the knife edge pass. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then they, they chopped each other up. They miscalculated. Anyway, uh, back to Chuck Yeager. Uh, see, that's funny. That's funny. You never seen Chuck Yeager on an air show circuit, as far as flying, you know, with any team or anything like that. He used to fly his own aircraft. Just like Bob Hoover used to fly the Shrike. The Shrike was the uh, uh, Arrow Commander. Um, do you remember Michael? Do you remember the Arrow Commander Shrike that he used to fly? No. I mean, that's that's more of an East Coast thing, I think, because uh, I don't think he flew very many West Coast uh, air shows. You guys know uh, Steve Ritchie? I know of him, yes. He's a F-4 Phantom uh, Vietnam ace. The name sounds familiar, and it may be. I wonder if he was talking in one of my – because I had a video at the end, and they had a bunch of pilots talking about, hey, we didn't have guns in the first A through the D model. That would have been nice. Um, he may have been in that video. That's why the name sounds familiar to me. Hey, Michael, what uh, what kind of education do you do, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, um, I teach online, um, mostly uh, homeschool or um, – it's more supplemental, so it's not a uh, it's a curriculum. Basically, I usually teach uh, uh, aviation weather or um, military aircraft specifically is what I pretty much been teaching. Well, you're going to be the man I'm going to probably come to. You are going to be one of the ones because I'm starting something pretty big uh, on P uh, PMarinSpaceFans.com for, for kids uh, about aviation and stuff like that. We're going to talk about aerodynamics. We're going to talk about um, um, just stuff in aviation, more or less, you know, yeah. the science about it uh, from aviation. I got some yeah. stuff from NASA, uh, some curriculum that actually I'm going to try to develop into something I, you know, for them to, to play around with. Yeah, so, and I teach mostly 11 to 16 is about the age group. Um, very precocious kids on this, um, mm -hmm. this line, mm -hmm. but you know, I don't want to be promoting business or what I'm doing, but, uh, um, mm -hmm. in this forum, but yeah, that would be something that I'd be interested in, um, you know, talking more about and, mm -hmm. and going down. Cause I'm not that far from the museum, probably about 35, 40 minutes from where I'm at. Yeah. You're about, you're about, uh, you're about maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's not very far anyway. You just get off on Valencia and there it is. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I used to work at the was it the uh, the Titan II for a while, uh, for a bit, and then COVID mm -hmm. kicked off. So yeah. that one's a little bit further <laughs> of a travel. Yeah. All right, guys, we got about ten minutes left. So what we're gonna what's gonna I just got a notification here that the ten minutes uh, we got about nine minutes and forty three seconds. So um, we're gonna kind of wrap this up a little bit, but uh, this is kind of what we're gonna be doing from now on. 
Uh, we're going to take a, take a break next week and we're going to talk, just have an open forum for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and then I'll be better prepared for, for this. But uh, like I said, Chuck Yeager was one of the best uh, pilots ever. I don't care. Hands down. Yeah. Yeah, because. Well, Steve Ritchie is better because that's what I wanted to mention you right now that he's, he's one of the popular uh known yep. hit historical figures of for aviation that i actually met at an air show of, of um i think might have been like don't want to say 10 years back no here in tucson i, I completely disagree with you there <laughs> but that's all i wanted to say about steve ritchie that Let, he, let's agree I to disagree at, on that i met him at the after flying uh his uh well, not his but the the air show circuit flown f4 phantom that's been flying around mm -hmm. at, from air shows to air show and he actually that at that air show that weekend he actually flew the plane and they were doing the, the f4 uh against the a mock dog fight against a, a mig i think it might have been the mig 15 did he did a like a mock mock dog fight at one of these air it shows a few years back could have been a 17. 17 looks very similar yeah, yeah. to the 15. It, it just has another uh, wing fencing on it. Um, but yeah, it's usually a 17, 19, 21 for Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So when he landed and he uh, he came to the commercial crowd in front and started passing out pictures of him and, and the F4 and was signing them. And I was actually in front right there. And I, was, I got his autograph and, and that's how I met him. Uh, just to make the story short, so yeah. I, I'm sorry, but I disagree with you on, on Steve Ritchie. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. It's either that or it's either that or, or Bob Hoover or uh, since Mr. See, I call Mr. Mark Anthony Mr. Maverick because he <laughs> loves Top Gun, okay, and he thinks he's Maverick. Anyway, um, Art Scholl is the greatest pilot ever. Him and him and Bob Hoover, as far as air show pilots, because Art Scholl did the Iron Eagle series, he did uh, Final Countdown, he did Top Gun, which where he was killed. Mm. Uh, he did uh, what was it, uh, uh, Doctor Strange Love? He did some of the flying scenes in that. That's an old old milk uh, old film. So I have to agree with you. I have to disagree with you there. <laughs> Chuck Yeager is the best pilot I ever saw. He's just a bad, like, he's awesome. Just like just like on the movie, uh, they asked Gordo Cooper, <clears throat> who's the best pilot you ever saw? So he, he says, Well, you're looking at no, no, you're looking at uh you're looking at Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager, he was awesome because he was just playing old school and like the best mechanically inclined mm -hmm. pilot. He just had guts. Yeah, I mean the guy well, just had guts. Yeah. Just do some crazy stuff. Hey, yeah, that's he, never he been done before. Guy, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He says I'm gonna. If you're gonna do it, I can do it better. You know, that's that's what I say. But um, I'm I, like I said, I, I'm we're uh, we're gonna start wrapping it up here. It's about uh, about five minutes left. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, we can still keep going until the timer runs out, but. Uh, like I said, I've got a timer where I can only do like 40 minutes uh, at a time meetings. I usually go over to check it out and so on and so forth. But, but a live recording, this live recording is about, about 40 minutes long. I've been on with Mark Anthony trying to help him with his controls. But if you guys are wanting to come in to these meetings and these discussions, you need to download Zoom, you need to get, get it uh, started, check it out. And then uh, come on in until, you know, because that's kind of what I'm um, going to be hosting these on. And if on. you have any problems of, of joining Zoom or, you know, technically like me, I, Dan had to help me with that, all that. But uh, do not be afraid or ashamed to, to call Dan and, and, and help, help you uh, set you up. So that way you could be able to join. I, mean, I, I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for Dan because I don't, I don't know nothing about well, that much I, about computers. I have 32 years in IT, so I know exactly what's up. But um, as far as, as far as everything else goes, uh, like I said, next week we're going to have a 
the discussion for um, just a, a general discussion on whatever we want to talk about about the museum. I kind of want to break it up a little bit so it doesn't get boring. Um, and we'll, we'll do what I did earlier, Dan. <laughs> right. the... Oh yeah, that was funny. Yeah, well, we're like uh, we're actually setting up uh, all the stuff, and then like the camera, my my uh, profile would go sideways and then go to upside down and then you see it this way and then, but we weren't live though it was shake all crazy and like yeah <laughs> yeah we're joking around i wish we'd have recorded that that would have been funny to see would have been funny but anyway um we're gonna keep on we're gonna have a little fun in these in these discussions um uh, the reason i didn't have it yesterday is i had some personal business i had to take care of so But um, anyway, guys, that's about it for now. We're going to wrap this up. And you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. Michael, if you want to join us, uh, you just look on the page um, for the events. It'll be there like you did before. Uh, on the Facebook page. Yeah, on the yeah. Uh, fans, yeah. We also have that web our website. I don't know if you've seen our website yet. No, I've mainly been tracking through the Facebook page. Well, if you look at the chat, if you open up your chat there, I'll put the, the website address. Okay. There you go. That's the uh, website. That, that, basically, this website was spawned off of our Facebook group. Okay. And we now have a, we now have a, oh, by the way, one thing I want to mention, guys. We now have a tw Twitter account. Uh, let me open up Twitter real quick before the time runs out. Uh, it's Twitter, 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 Twitter. There we go. Um, the page is it's, it's called Pima Space Air Space and Space Fans. I'm sorry, Pima Space Air Space and Space Space <laughs> Space Fans. It's basically at Pima Air Fans is what it is. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but there it is. I don't know if y'all can see it. No, it's it doesn't yeah. Yeah, it's all blurry. So basically, um I post on there. I'm going to I've got I've got a lot of some followers here. I got the Thunderbirds following me. I've got the Elon Musk. I've got uh let's see who else? SpaceX following me. Uh, all kinds of stuff. So, I I've been trying to build it up. Let's put it that way. Now, if I go to my profile here, I can actually see what what's been posted. Um, basically says, "Come join the." Uh, it's basically a very first Twitter or tweet. So once I once I get rid of this and I get and when I get stop this, you guys, then I'll post the link to the video. Once I upload it to YouTube. So, all right, guys, thanks very much. Have a great day. It was nice we'll meeting you, Michael. Yep, well, it was nice meeting you, Mark Anthony and you as, uh, Dan. You, you as well, Michael. Uh, oh. Michael, Michael, or, or Michael. <laughs> Mark Anthony and I are the, or one of the admins. So, we um, and we got uh, WR Tally, we've got Mar uh, Christopher Hogue, and we got the owner of the group, Tobin Fuller, whom I met at the air show this year, this past year. He's a real nice guy. All right, guys, have fun. We're going to stop recording. Have a great day. All right. See you guys. Absolutely.